Hello, welcome to Jay's studio. This will be part one of at least two parts on how, or not how really, but the process of upgrading the ER20. Uh, the ER20 being this covered in all kinds of stuff. Uh, small printer, the Aerial and ER20 printers, hot end. And I'm, I'm kind of going to document this a little bit uh, for the YouTube channel, not because, hey, here's another hot end upgrade just for fun. It's the fact that the ER20 has like a, a persistent problem with its hot ends, uh, and not just the ER20, the Airy one. Airy one's hot ends, the stock hot end uh, that uh, everybody's used to seeing, little orange carriage, etc. Um, that hot end, like the Creality, like several other hot ends, that are out there requires um, a, a, what what is kind of ubiquitously known as the ER or as the hot end fix, and uh, that uh, that consists of like printing off a bunch of small or printing off a very small washer, cutting a particular length of PTFE tubing, and then you know inserting the tubing down into the uh, uh, inserting the tubing into um, the hot end all the way down and then start, you know, maneuvering the washer down into that particular, you know, to, into place. The problem is, is that apart from several, a couple, you know, and good on them, apart from, I would say, the vast minority of users, uh, that hot end fix doesn't keep. Um, it eventually wears out and actually fairly quickly if you, uh, if you print all the time and you wind up with a big mess on your hot end with a ton of, uh, you know, a ton of melted filament all gooping up everything and you have to clean it up. I mean, this is just documented over and over again on the Facebook page with the users, etc. So this video is to talk about one of the solutions out there for upgrading your hot end that allows you to use your stock hot end carriage. Um, and I want to talk through it because actually there are things I'm learning as I go through it about the solution that's out here. So first, all respect to Ray. Um, you're, I, I'm just going to say Ray, um, as he's the one whose STLs are going to be linked below, uh, for coming up with some solutions to allow us to use a few more, or a commonly used hot end. And that's one of the problems with the Area 1 hot ends is proprietary. It's, um, it's very difficult to get in stock. Uh, sometimes you're waiting a month or two for a replacement. So this particular hot end uh, replacement uses the, uh, the, you know, kind of a micro Swiss J head type hot end, which you can find, uh, I, I mean, literally probably thousands of listings on AliExpress to be able to get, to get one that fits. That said, uh, there are some gotchas and part one here, we're going to talk about what I've done to this particular point. When I get back to part two, hopefully I've got it all put together again and I can talk about what it took to get to that, uh, to get to that point. So first of all, uh, what you're going to need to do is buy um, buy a new hot end uh, here, and I've already got this inserted into one of the pieces of Ray's uh, STL uh, piece. So uh, just be advised that he has two. The one that's linked below is the one to, with the solution using the the, the M6 head uh, here, uh, not the M8. Um, if you want to convert to M8, you can do the other way around. Um, if you wanted to stick with the M6 uh, nozzles. Um, and and use a you know pretty much the same pretty much the same hardware all around. Then make sure you're using the STL that I have linked below on Thingiverse, uh, which is Ray's solution. So what are you going to print when you print his solution? You're going to print this block uh, that's used to actually um, uh, kind of mount the the new hot end into the carriage. You're going to print a screw, and you're going to print. Um, let me grab it here, uh, a little washer. So you've still got a hot end fix going on. This is just a much ro more robust uh, way of doing it with a shelf actually designed in the screw, and I'll show you that here in just a second. On that Thingiverse STL that I have linked, it's going to have several listings as to hot ends you can buy uh, that will work. Please do not trust them. And I'm sorry, Ray, i got to say it. Uh, because if you just buy any one that's there... Uh, you could buy what I bought first and waited for three weeks to get here. And yeah, this will fit. This is uh, this is a, you know, an M6 hot end, micro Swiss J head. Uh, everything seems to be right. This is the 4.1 bore version, which is the same as the ER20, um, and you know, but nominally. Um, but this, I mean, while it will work, it will, will require extensive modifications. Why? Because it's just so long. 
as compared to the proprietary hot end. Yeah, it'll fit in here. Yeah, that'll fit in here. But it's going to stick out like way below uh, where your pro. Sorry for my arm getting in the way. Way below where your probe uh, is, if you see the probe tip over here. And you're going to wind up having to remount the probe tip. And then this is going to be a massively big carriage that's going to take away more of your Z height. You get the idea. Basically, um, what you've got to be looking for is the overall height of the overall height of the of the um, hot end that you buy and try to minimize that. So then I went back, uh, I was a little bit more rigorous with the way that I was dealing with the, the height of the hot end. And you'll see that what I wound up getting, let me get it over here so you can actually see it and try it. Uh, you know what, I'll just switch my hand so you can actually get that way. Um, I gained, oh, I don't know, three millimeter, you know, two to three millimeters of Z height at the bottom of that. Uh, as compared to the first one that I bought over here. I will link below the one that I bought um, and hopefully, you know, we'll see if I, that actually works the way I want to. Um, I actually thought it was pretty cute. Little small blue block here um, and it fits up in there nicely. So what did I have to do after that? <laughs> okay, so a couple things. One, the you know, the, you notice that and, and Ray did a great job of designing this block so that you have screws. Uh, you'll have to get some hardware, um, and the, that hardware is listed on the uh, the STL uh, how to do this kind of that front page on Thingiverse. It's going to tell you the hardware you're going to need to get. You're going to need to get a couple screws for this. Um, you're also going to need to get, need to get a couple screws for mounting. Here I got some black ones. Uh, for mounting on the top through the carriage to be able to hold this block in. Um, so you're going to get a few screws. All right, all good, right? This is this is still not going to work. Why? Because you're looking at the hot end carriage here. This slot is nowhere near big enough to actually fit your hot end into the carriage. Mine fits now. Why? Because I've done two hours of work. Those two hours of work have been using a file, a little bit of an X-Acto blade to enlarge this notch so that you can actually slide the hot end on. And I'll talk about how the, slide, the, the hot end gets slid on, but it's gonna need to slide to where that notch fits around the heat sink of your hot end. And uh, it needs to go deep enough so that there's one, the block is flat on the top here and two, you've got your holes lined up, everything squared away for you to be able to do this. Actually, you're going to need to go even deeper than that because you want this to actually attach to the top and tram itself to the carriage without like being forced in because it's still pushing against this, uh, pushing against the notch, which might cause you to have like a little bit of a, uh, of a twisted block where it's kind of off center, if that makes any sense. So you're going to need to actually do a lot of work to, to get a decent notch cut cleaned up in that piece. And there's a mess here now as a result of having done this over the last couple of days. Um, and that's fine. Uh, so once you actually get that done, you're good. But was that it? No. And here, if Ray, if you ever watch this, I mean, you did such a great job designing this with cable management, etc. And this is all great. But really, in reality, I'm, I'm just I'm just wondering why the top is as far away from this um, from the heat sink. Right, we could use quite a few more of these hot ends if you would take, if we could redesign this with at least three to four millimeters off the top here. Does that make sense? I mean, that just would really help out. Um, so again, so what did I do? Because I wanna make sure I can use my BL Touch or the Airy One Touch sensor without having to try to remount it or use different, I wanted to use the carriage just as it was um, so I did a lot of sanding on the top of this to remove at least a millimeter of space. I hope that's going to be enough. In my second video, we'll see um, whether I've, I've taken enough off the top of this particular block to make sure that we're at a, at a height such that I can still use my touch sensor over here and not ruin my bed uh, <laughs> with the nozzle sticking out below that, if that makes any sense. So... Um, um, lastly for this video, how does this, or not lastly for this video, because I'm going to talk about the other spot or the other things too. Um, but like, it's pretty easy to figure out where this goes. This is your, where your hot end cooling fan goes, obviously blowing in. That's where the largest hole on this block goes. So it's pretty easy to figure out that that's the way, uh, that slides in. And then the fan 
here is going to going to blow directly on your uh, um, heat sink uh, fins and cool down, uh, give you the nice uh, heat transition uh, from nozzle and block all the way to the top of the hot end. So this is ready to go here. Um, so what are the other pieces that that you've got? You print uh, a screw, and that screw is going to actually fit into your your hot end uh, into the into that block, and it's going to screw down for quite a ways. I, I I've got I have yet to like. <clears throat> get there. So that's going to screw into there, but before, and then after that goes all the way in there, which it, it actually screws a good ways into that block, um, you're going to need to, um, uh, after that gets in there, you're going to need to place your washer, and the washer actually has a flat side and a very slightly convex side to it, and that washer is going to go into here where it's got a nice shelf to rest to rest against, to make it super easy to replace should you need to replace it or to get at your um, um, your deal. So that's where that's going to go. Obviously, once you're ready to go, you're going to wind up having to cut your PTFE tube. That's going to go all the way down into your nozzle um, or into your nozzle and should leave about one millimeter. Uh, it should poke about one meter, millimeter up ahead of that shelf. Then your washer is going to go on top of it. And then last step, obviously, once you get it all together, is you're going to wind up having this fitting screwed all the way down on top of the washer, pushing down on the PTFE tube so that it seats against the nozzle. Um, many of you may ask why I'm not using Capricorn tubing. I'm obviously using the regular tubing here um, because I want to try it and see if this works before I use up some of my valuable Capricorn tubing for, I mean, this should work for a while. Um, eventually, it'll start burning at the bottom just given the fact that it doesn't have the same heat resistance. But I only print PLA here. Not going to heat the hot block up above to about 220 to 225. So this should last a pretty decent long time. All right. Um, those are the pieces of the hot end fix. Um, one more thing I'll mention is that for me, I actually cut off some of the threads uh, of this particular um, uh, this particular screw here uh, because I wanted, instead of having this, which sits right here, which is going to get close to the top of the printer, I'm sorry, not you can't see that. Um, this is going to sit right on the carriage and it's going to get close to the top of the printer. That, I didn't want to lose Z height, any more Z height than I needed to. So I cut off a little bit there. So it's actually going to sit a little bit closer uh, closer to the carriage uh, once it's actually screwed all the way into uh, the, the top of the, the, the heat sink there of the hot end. So just some things to think about here. Um, this, is, uh, this is not for the faint of heart, but at the same time, it's pretty easy. Um, I am making a shout out to Ray because he did a great job of designing this, this, uh, this mount that actually uses the stock carriage. But, but really, we need to lose three millimeters off the top of this design. I wish I was good at actually designing these parts. Uh, I've got too many hobbies as it is, so I don't know if I have time to learn, you know, CAD or whatever it takes to be able to do that. I'm sure there's an easy way to, like, plop this model into some program and then just, like, say, hey, slice three millimeters off of this dimension. Um, if that can be done, uh, this thing would be very close to being perfect uh, as, as a solution for the, uh, for the ER20's hot end uh, stock carriage, uh, because then you'd have a lot uh, uh, you, could, you would have a selection of any number of these small micro squish J head hot ends without worrying about having to remount the uh, sensor, the probe uh, for auto leveling your bed, etc. Um, and just the whole thing would be much more svelte uh, in the sense of in the sense of being uh, not so big from the top all the way to the bottom. Um, that's that's my two cents worth on part one. Uh, I'm going to clean all this up actually get this installed in the carriage. Um, and then of course, I've got to get into the, the, the it's really a pain, uh, but get into the, like the logistics work. Uh, it's kind of fiddly work, uh, relooming the wires um, all the way back because at the same time I decided to go ahead and, uh, and change, I'll drop them down here hopefully to where you can see them, uh, change my, uh, uh, my heated, heating cartridge, and I'm also going to change my th th thermistor uh, just for the sake of having new stuff in there uh, completely uh, as we go forward with this. So we'll see how this all works out. I'll come back with a video point two, or, or part two of the hot end upgrade to let you, uh, to, to kind of report on how it worked or if it worked. 
Um, and if you've got any questions, drop them down below. Like I said, the links in the video are going to be for Ray's STL that you're going to have to print. It's going to be in th three parts. Um, and and there, you will need some supports for this, by the way, for the for the block. But as long as you don't go crazy, use some tree supports, not too too high of an angle of support at that particular piece, and this will print just fine. I've actually printed three of them, two blue and one red. I like the red. Uh, just uh, our, this one printed off just a little bit better than the other two, uh, but they printed fine. And then uh, and then you get the screw and you get the washers. Print three or four of the washers so that you have some backups, and uh, and and we can you know go from there. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, like it. Uh, if you want to subscribe to my ongoing saga with Area One Printers, both uh, with regards to updating pieces or, and upgrading pieces, as well as uh, converting to Clipper firmware, um, that's uh, what I'm going to be focusing on over the next few months when I make these videos. Happy 3D printing. See you next time.